What's up everybody, my name is Scott Paddock and today I'm gonna to show you how to play faster and cleaner on the saxophone by fixing the five most common hand position mistakes. Today we are gonna to talk all about technique, more specifically about your hand position on the saxophone. If you want really fast and really clean technique on the saxophone, then that is something you really need to pay attention to. And there are five common mistakes that I run into all of the time. And if you can fix these five mistakes, then your fingers are definitely gonna be moving faster and cleaner immediately. The first big hand position mistake I see all of the time with people who are playing the saxophone is using a death grip, squeezing those keys really hard. I always say, don't squeeze the keys. Don't squeeze the keys. So what do I mean by that? So if you flex all of the muscles in your hand and make a C and like try to move your fingers quickly, it does not work well. Your fingers don't work well at all under that tension. So if you're playing a saxophone and you're squeezing down these keys really hard, you're never gonna have clean and fast technique. It just won't work. So you wanna shake it out, you want loose fingers, you want these fingers moving really clean and really smooth without much effort at all. Now on the opposite end of that, I also see early intermediate people playing the saxophone, timidly pushing down the keys as if they're asking their saxophone if it's okay if they play that note. Yes, it is okay if you play that note, push down the keys with a regular pressure. You don't wanna squeeze, but you need to be pushing it down hard enough that the keys go down really easily. The second big hand position mistake is no flat fingers. We don't want our fingers going like this on the saxophone. You wanna make a C and then put the C on the saxophone. That gives you little hammers. So your fingers move really clean and really easily like this. If you make a C in your hand and you move your fingers like this, it's very easy. If you make them flat, they don't work nearly as well and they don't go as fast or as smooth. So if you want really clean and smooth and fast, uh, technique, you want to make your hand into a C with little hammers and put it right on the saxophone. The next big mistake I see all of the time, even the professional players, including when I look at some of my videos, and that is keep your fingers close to the keys. So the closer your fingers are to the keys, the less they have to move, and the less they have to move, the faster and cleaner you're going to play. So you don't want to play G, A, B, C, D, you don't want your hands all over the place. You want your hands as close as you can to the saxophone. Now, when you're taking a solo and you're really going for it, you're gonna see your fingers pop up and that kind of stuff. That's not a really big deal, but you don't wanna be raising your hands and flapping them all over the place when you're playing the saxophone. You want to keep them as close as possible to the keys so that you don't have a lot of extra movement when you're pushing down the keys, especially when you're playing fast runs. A really easy way to fix this problem is to think about having your fingers connected to the key touches at all times. So when you're pushing down the key, when the key is coming up, even thinking about pulling the key up. Now, obviously you're not pulling the key up, but if you think about your finger pulling that key up instead of just pushing it down, it's gonna keep it connected and it's gonna keep your technique and your fingers really close to the keys. Again, of course you're not pulling that key up, but if you think about it being connected and how it's connected as the key is coming up, that's gonna help clean up your technique. If you'd like to get your fingers moving a whole lot faster and a whole lot cleaner, then I'd like to invite you to come check out the Chop Shop series in the Scott Paddock Sax School. The Chop Shop series are my technique exercises that I have throughout the Sax School. So they range from early intermediate all the way up through early advanced and they're level appropriate. So one of the big problems that you see with technique exercises is it's one size fits all. So you get the Close book and it's just a whole bunch of exercises. In my Chop Shop series, they start off easier and slower and then get faster and faster. We add in more range, we add in more keys. So you're constantly progressing and leveling, leveling up with your technique. So if you'd like to add a lot of structure into your technique exercises, and get your fingers moving a whole lot faster and cleaner, then you are definitely gonna wanna check out my Chop Shop series. In addition to my Chop Shop series, I also have pathway courses, which are set up exactly like private lessons that start with beginner, putting your saxophone together, going all the way through early advance where we're talking about Charlie Parker transcriptions. So if you'd like to check that out, then stop by the Scott Paddock Sax School. I'll put a link in the video description. 
The fourth, a really big hand position mistake, which will not only slow down your technique, but cause physical pain is not having your wrist straight going on to the saxophone. So when you're playing the saxophone, you want both of your wrists in a really straight position going right into the saxophone. You don't want any curves in it. When you do that, you make the tendons in your wrists work a lot harder and it causes pain. It can cause carpal tunnel syndrome and it just slows everything down. I did this when I was in high school and early college, not realizing it. And my hands started to just absolutely kill me after I was playing the saxophone for a while. And then I figured out if my wrists are straight, it doesn't hurt and my technique is a whole lot cleaner. So you wanna make sure that your wrists on both sides, left and right, are going straight onto the saxophone and there are no crazy turns or curves in your arms or wrists. And the final hand position mistake that I see, especially with beginners and early intermediates, is flapping their arms when they play the saxophone. Don't flap your arms. So what do I mean by that? I mean, as you are playing up, as the notes are going up, arms raising up and then going down. So you're doing this as you're playing. So if I'm playing a D scale, you wanna keep your arms in when you are playing the saxophone. Some movement around is totally fine, but you don't wanna be flapping your arms, especially with the ascending and descending direction of the notes. If you fix these five major hand position mistakes, I can guarantee that you will have faster and cleaner saxophone technique.